The Candace Owens Ben Shapiro beef, the Daily Wire debacle over the second largest company in conservative media firing Candace for criticism of Israel for saying things that most Americans would agree with, has entered its third week now. It is only getting bigger. The backlash is growing. The controversy is not going away. The criticism continues to mount against the Daily Wire. And now, next week, Ben and Candace may sit down face-to-face and have a long-awaited debate about various issues regarding Israel and supposed anti-Semitism. And this is not about internet drama or two powerhouse conservative hosts having a beef. It's about something so much bigger. It's about Conservative Inc., the mainstream corporate conservative media, trying to control the narrative about what people are allowed to talk about regarding American foreign policy, Israel, and Jews. But before we get into all that, just a quick heads up, the new Christ is King shirt is finally available in my online store at markdice.com or click the link in the description below. And if you haven't been following this story, that is one of the straws that led to the camel's back breaking over at the Daily Wire when Candace Owens posted Christ is King on Twitter because some people over the Daily Wire consider that to be anti-Semitic because it hurts Ben Shapiro's feelings. Patrick Bet David had some very interesting things to say about the situation this week. I'll play that clip in just a moment. He has become a political powerhouse recently. He was always very successful with his Valuetainment channel, but never really got political. Did very interesting interviews about a lot of different things, but since he launched his podcast, he has become a political powerhouse. And this is what he said about the situation this week, which got a lot of people's attention. CBN is what? What does CBN stand for? Christian Broadcasting, Christian Broadcasting Network. Network. It's, not, it's not, you know, a RBN, Religious Broadcasting no. Network. It's what? Christian. Christian Broadcasting Network. Daily Wire can be Daily DJW, Daily Jewish Wire, or DIW, Daily Israel Wire. No problem. Yep. If that's your value, stick to that. Little Ben also got roasted by comedian Andrew Schultz this week. He makes the argument for censorship. He calls it something else. Yeah, I forget the term. I have it in my phone. But he, I don't even think he's using the term right. But he's basically like, there's a window of ideas we accept. Yes. And we accept ideas between this, uh, this, I guess this is, if I get window, you're looking like this. So we accept ideas between here and here. And anything outside of that window, well, you're fireable. That's censorship. What? But yeah. he's acting as if this is like, a justified reason for firing people when you built your identity and platform off of no censorship and freedom of yes, speech and yeah. facts don't care about your feelings and all this shit. Also funny that that window happens to end where his beliefs end. I am Isn't that interesting? You would say well, that. not being pro-Israel, that's where the window ends. That's what? also your specific personal belief. What? So. Now, before you give Andrew Schultz too much credit, you should know that he is an ardent Black Lives Matter supporter and rubs elbows with the mainstream media in order to promote their agenda, including their communist tactics. This is a little skit that he did for Netflix. Rioting is never peaceful. It is the intentional destruction of property for sending a message, like a Disney star defiling a dunk champion. And by that definition, I agree, it seems wrong. And I know what you're thinking. Why can't they just protest peacefully? And the answer is, they did. Oh, they did. That's odd because the very foundation and the core doctrines of Black Lives Matter is violence. But he did make some good points about Little Ben. So in this case, the enemy of our enemy is our friend. I just so don't you see. you can't have an opinion on your platform that is not pro a country that is not ours? Hmm. Yeah. Wait a minute. It's crazy. I wish So wait, is I the Daily the Wire an American media platform or is it an Israeli Ooh. media platform? <laughs> I'm just asking. This guy's cooking. Well, maybe Mr. Schultz doesn't want to be part of the mainstream media anymore, but in the past, he certainly tried. He also continued to attempt damage control by going on Megyn Kelly's podcast where he presented one of the most pathetic straw man arguments I've ever heard, who only a complete moron would believe, but unfortunately... It doesn't look like the Daily Wire subscribers are all that bright. It's now spun into a debate about whether the Daily Wire is pro-free speech. Uh, the accusation is you are until it comes to Israel. How do you respond? 
I mean, what I will say is that we have a wide variety of positions on Israel right now inside the Daily Wire. Matt Walsh, obviously, is another one of the hosts at the Daily Wire. He and I wildly disagree about what America's Israel policy should be. Matt is much more isolationist. He basically believes the United States has no no real interests in the Middle East, and thus the United States should not be providing material support to anyone, including the state of Israel. You know, Matt, obviously, is well within you know the, the, the sort of group of hosts that we have here at the Daily Wire. So clearly whatever is going on is not about Israel specifically. That's really all I have to say about it. Did you catch that sophistry? Matt Walsh being a non-interventionalist and not wanting to give U.S. tax dollars to any foreign country, including Israel, which is usually the one exception that Republicans and mainstream conservative talk shows will carve out when they claim that they're America first and they don't rail against President Zelensky and so they don't want to give a dime to Ukraine to defend themselves against Russia, but they usually almost always make the exception for Israel. That is not criticism of Israel or Israel's response to Gaza or their activities or treatment of the Palestinians. This is the new talking point that they came up with after the disastrous interview with Pierce Morgan, which deserves a replay even if you've seen it, because we shouldn't forget what a weasel Ben Shapiro is. This should be the Daily Wire's Bud Light moment, and it may be, which is why it's now into its third week, and the controversy and the criticism is only growing. Before they probably hired a crisis response team, a PR agency, to try to war game talking points for how to save what's left of Ben Shapiro's reputation, this was how he responded to any questions about what happened to Candace Owens over there. One of the consequences of this war has been a lot of very high passions on both sides, a lot of angry disagreements. You and your company have been at the centre of a very uh, high-profile one at the moment with Candace Owens, who's now left Daily Wire. Um, was she fired or did she leave of her own volition? I'm not going to speak to this topic, Pierce. So her contract didn't expire and she didn't quit because actually on her last episode, she told the audience that she'll see them tomorrow. But of course, that didn't happen. At, at all. At all. You Look at that smug little smirk. Can't give me any uh, insight into why she departed? No hints, no nothing. I'm not going to speak to this. He was just hoping that it would blow over. This interview was most likely booked before the firing. And so to Pierce's credit, who went off for an entire week after Alex Jones was restored on Twitter, uh, upset about that even though his show is called Uncensored. So to Pierce's credit, he saw this opportunity and pressed Ben a little bit. Can, can, I, ask, can I ask why? I mean, you can ask. No, no, I'm not. You can ask why you don't want to say anything. Um, again, you can ask. <laughs> well, that was then and this is now, because now Ben Shapiro considers just asking questions of which the answers may lead to criticism of Israel to be anti-Semitic. Right, this is the game that is played by so many corrupt commentators, just asking questions. I don't have to show you evidence that something terrible is happening. I don't have to actually demonstrate how the thing is happening. I don't have to tell you who the problem is, wink, wink. But I can just tell you right now that there is a problem. But even if, and, and if I'm asked about it, hey, I'm just asking questions. Now, let me tell you something about just asking questions for a second. Just asking questions is a game for children. My son is seven. He can just ask questions. My daughter is 10. She can just ask questions. If you are 50 and you are just asking questions, I don't think you're just asking questions. He's referring to not only Candace Owens, but also Tucker Carlson right there with the comment about being 50. I think that your level of curiosity is actually quite low. I think that you don't care enough to know or know enough to care. I think that the vast majority of people who are in the just asking questions business have an answer that they want to suggest, but they know there's no evidence for it. So instead, they hide behind just asking questions. Actually, what he means is often the answer is so politically incorrect that it will lead to someone's cancellation. And so instead, they ask the question so that their audience can arrive at that answer on their own instead of them having to blurt it out and create a soundbite that can then be used for their cancellation. But a talk show host getting their audience to think for themselves isn't allowed anymore these days, according to Ben Shapiro. 
Also, just yesterday, after two weeks, Christopher Rufo, the leader in the fight against critical race theory and DEI, weighed in on the Candace controversy, agreeing with Ben Shapiro, saying that she should have been fired. And while Ben Shapiro oddly won't comment on why Candace Owens was fired, fellow Daily Wire host Andrew Clavin was very open and upfront about it and called for Candace to be fired and was glad that she got fired and cited one of the reasons as being she said Christ is king. When you use that phrase to mean that God has abandoned his chosen people, the Jews, through whom he came into this world incarnate, and that he's broken his promises, his covenant with the Jews, you are quoting scripture like Satan does in the Bible. You are quoting scripture to your purposes, and that to me is specifically wicked. You know, when you spit that phrase at Ben Shapiro, my friend Ben Shapiro, and, and you know, I, un I understand this. All, every, all of you who love Ben, and I love Ben, and Jordan Peterson, you all want to see them find Jesus because you know what joy and, and freedom that gives you, and, and you certainly feel that it alters your relationship with God. But when I think about this, to be honest with you, uh, you know, and I know some people will disagree with this, but I... He goes on to say that Ben Shapiro doesn't need Jesus and that if Ben Shapiro and or Jordan Peterson, who also works for the Daily Wire, if they were to become Christians, it would be bad for the Daily Wire's business. If Ben were to embrace Jesus Christ, it would cause devastation to his family, to the people who love him, to the people who listen to him, to his position in the world. I just have this feeling that God has put this guy where he wants him to do what he wants him to do. Apparently God wants Ben Shapiro to fire people for saying that Christ is king. And so when you spit Christ the king at them to insist that they have been rejected by the one who sent them to do the work that they're doing, nah, no, 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 no. <laughs> when Jeremy Point has to sign that check, he's doing something that he cannot abide. He cannot abide it. It's not because Ben is his friend. I know Ben is a friend and he loves Ben and we all love Ben, you know, a, and I understand that. But that's not why he can't abide it. He, he's, people say things, including me, people say things on this outlet all the time that Ben doesn't like and Ben disagrees with. But Jeremy signs their checks and doesn't stop them. This is too far, not because of Ben, but because of what it really means. It's really this hatred of Jews, this level of hatred of Jews is a hatred of God. And I know that such things are being said under the aegis of the Daily Wire. It has to end. It has to stop. No matter what price we pay for it, no matter what crap we take for it, no matter what they call us, and they're going to call us everything, if Candace wants to say those things about the Jews, about Hitler, no matter how she dodges and weaves, she has to leave the Daily Wire. By the way, the things that she said about Hitler, which she's referencing there, is Candace mentioning the little-known fact that the first book burning conducted by the Nazis took place at the Sexual Research Institute, which was run by a guy named Magnus Hirschfeld, which was the first transgender clinic in the world. And so they're trying to frame that as if Candace now supports everything that the Nazis did, as if, if Hitler said that children should brush their teeth before they go to bed. If you say that, then according to this same logic, you would support the Nazis. And by him saying that Candace saying Christ is king, which the Daily Wire construed as her saying directly to Ben Shapiro, even though it wasn't in a direct response to anything he said, she didn't tag him in the tweet. She had tweeted it many years earlier, as well as many people say Christ is king, is very revealing because this Twitter account called Censored Men, which is very large, has over a million followers, posted last week, screenshots of what they claimed was an email that they obtained from a Daily Wire staffer, which said that they held an emergency meeting before the firing of Candace Owens, and that one of the reasons was that they deemed Christ is King to be anti-Semitic. Now, I reported this last week, and I said, you know, that there's no verification for this, at least at that point, but the fact that this could have been easily debunked by any Daily Wire host but wasn't, shows that this was most likely 
a real email. And as Andrew Clavin admitted, one of the reasons that she was fired, because all it would have taken is for Jeremy Boring or Matt Walsh or any of the other Daily Wire hosts to say, I never got an email like that. I wasn't made aware of any meeting that took place like that. This is totally fake news, and it would have debunked this post. Not that anybody has to respond to every rumor that's going around out there, but this went mega viral from a massive account making a very specific allegation claiming to have screenshots of an internal email, and if it was fake, which it could have been, somebody could have just duped them, they could have made it up, it could have easily be been debunked with one tweet from Matt Walsh or from Andrew Clavin or Jeremy Boring or any of the Daily Wire hosts. But of course, they said nothing. And take a look at the security measures that the Daily Wire took so that nobody could record the meeting. Please note that this is a private employee-only town hall. So please do not bring independent contractors along to the meeting. Please leave all cell phones at the desk. No phones will be permitted at the town hall. Which leads us to the apparent pending debate between Candace Owens and Ben Shapiro. There were so many tweets back and forth yesterday between Candace and Ben and Jeremy Boring, Ben's hype man, that I'm not even going to pull them up or go through them all. I'll just summarize what happened. Yesterday, Candace posted that she wants to debate Ben and asked somebody to host the debate. And then little Ben responded that if Candace wants to debate, that she better be in his studio on Monday at 5 p.m. or she's a chicken. And then he posted that he's logging off for the Sabbath because a lot of Orthodox Jews log off all technology or claim to you know, not use any technology for the Sabbath from sundown on Friday night through sundown on Saturday night. And so it turns out that Candace isn't even in town. She's not even in the country. Her husband is from England. And so her and the family are halfway around the world. And of course, there were numerous big names who stepped up offering to host a debate from Patrick Ben David to Tim Pool to that robot guy, Lex Friedman, and even Patrick Ben David offering a quarter million dollars to Lake and Riley's family if they'll have the debate on his show. Things got even weirder when Jeremy Boring repeated Ben's take it or leave it, you know, show up at my studio at 5 p.m. on Monday or you're a chicken. When Candace responded that not only is she in London, but she was scheduled to be over there with a Daily Wire film crew to be conducting some interviews or to be doing something for a Daily Wire documentary or a project that obviously Jeremy Boring would have known about because he would have approved international travel for a host to go over there and bring an entire Daily Wire film crew. And so she said, look, I'm not even in the country. And then Jeremy said, well, you've flown all over the world in the past to do interviews. Why can't you just come back here on Monday for the interview? And then he basically agreed that she could just live stream it on her YouTube channel instead if she decides to Skype in for the debate, which would be lame because this is a debate that should take place in person, face to face. So after more bickering back and forth between Jeremy and Candace, they finally agreed that when Candace is back in the United States, that Ben Shapiro will sit down with her face to face, but not on anybody else's platform, or at least if it is on somebody else's platform, there will be no moderator. So it looks like Candace can just stream it to her own personal YouTube channel then. But they'll probably demand that they allow multi-streams because the Daily Wire is going to want to use those numbers to then leverage for advertisers so that they can say, hey, look at how many millions of views we get every week. But it looks like the debate may happen unless Ben Shapiro tries to stick to his little weasel tactic of saying, it's in my studio on Monday or no debate. Now, the debate is not going to be about why Candace was fired from the Daily Wire. The Daily Wire has her locked in an ironclad NDA, although the reasons for that are quite obvious. The debate is going to be about the definition of anti-Semitism, which, as I'm sure you know, according to the ADL and Ben Shapiro and many others, is just simply disagreeing with a Jew about anything, or rather 
someone who Jews hate, instead of what the actual definition is, is that someone who hates Jews. Dr. Trachtenberg, welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman Goodlatte, Ranking Member Conyers, and members of this committee. It's an honor to be here today to testify on the issue of anti-Semitism on college campuses. I'm grateful that you're soliciting a wide range of voices on this important subject because the right of students and faculty to express diverse views is precisely what is at stake in the current attempts to limit campus speech. It's increasingly common to hear reports that a new anti-Semitism threatens to engender students on a scale not seen since sec the Second World War and the Holocaust. Studies from several major organizations have sounded the alarm that anti-Semitism is a clear and present danger, while a number of commentators have argued that yet another war against the Jews is upon us. However, they're motivated less by an actual threat facing American or world Jewry than they are part of a persistent campaign to thwart debates, scholarly research, and political activism that's critical of the state of Israel. Of course, there is a long and growing list of things that people claim are anti-Semitic. The latest of which being saying Christ is king around Ben Shapiro because that apparently hurts his feelings. And because we don't care about Ben Shapiro's feelings, or really anyone's for that matter around here, and because Christ is king, the Christ is king shirt is now available in my online store at markdice.com or click the link in the description below. Currently it is available in either black or white. I'll try to add some other colors soon. So head on over to markdice.com or click the link in the description below and check it out.